Hey everybody, Charlie Nine Two here, and welcome back to Ancient Egypt in the Talos Principle. I'm so glad that we have a uh, tile swap here, so that we can actually look at different landscape. Even though it'll eventually be the same as far as what we're doing, solving puzzles, it's nice to look at something different. And I really love the vibe of Ancient Egypt. I've always been fascinated by it, so. Definitely cool to see that. Let's head this way. We'll get the L. Before we get this L, here's a bucket of paint. Paint message here. Certification. Okay, so we only have the same ones to choose from, minus the one we already did. I have no idea what's going on, do you? Let's read this one. I made a box float, seriously. It was awesome. So boxes can float, apparently. Hello. Alright, let's go get this. Window through a door. Okay, well there's our piece. There's a ladder to it. There's the door. Got to figure out where we need this red to go to. I don't know yet. Put you there for now. Okay. That's the end. Okay. So we need to get this door open so we can get another repeater. Now, how can we get to that? Ah. Well, this will help. Well, let's do something like that. do something like that. It's going to close in a second. Can we just do this? Takes too long, doesn't it? Alright, so we need to use this window through a door, right? But how can we? Oh, I think I know. I think I know. So we can grab this, we can do something like this, hold on, here, and here, and there. We do this, we then bypass, right? Yes. Okay. And now all we got to do is boom, boom, diddly boom. All right. Not too bad. Alright, next. I have three golden pieces to the left. Let's go get those. It's like a new another uh, QR code over here. Let's go ahead and read that. 
Excuse me, I have to cough. And I'm back. Thank you for that. There are hidden dangers in this new world. I've inexplicably escaped death any number of times. I suggest vigilance. Who knows what happens to those who step carelessly too often? Anything over here? I don't see anything. We'll continue working our way around the left here. Get the golden zigzag. Third wheel. Well, for now. Did you guys see that wall kind of phase out of existence for a minute? That was cool. So the blue needs to go where? Blue needs to go here. So that means this needs to go like here. Is that it? What was over here? Anything? Is this... Is that all we need to do? Okay. That one was easier than I expected it to be. Almost unlocking a fan. Uh, so that seems like it'll unlock stuff for more puzzles, which means more complexity. So yeah, this one will use refractors or repeaters or whatever you want to call them. Oh, called the Road of Death. I like this. There you go. Go destroy something. Will you? Or will you not? It may not. So we need to get a box over here. Okay, I think I see what we need to do. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> Can't climb with the box. Can't place it up there. Let's try to get a different perspective going here. Let's grab you. Let's go over here. Wait a minute. Oh. I see. Let's just do this. You should be able just to walk under this, right? Nope. <laughs> I thought we could. This thing goes under it. Oh, stop. Give me this. Does that not work? Can we we can't crouch, can we? Huh. What am I not seeing here? Go go on the ladder's right there. I feel like we should be able to go over that. But we can't. Alright, so what can we do? We have four turrets. They're covering each other's blind spots. We have this guy. Hmm. 
If we could destroy one turret, we would be good. Let's continue over. Let's see what happens from the other side here. Can't turn these off, right? So I need a box here. What does this say? Epitaph, child program. Codename Samsara, terminated here. Logic, program timed out, final memory dump. But I only, I was stuck. What was I supposed to do? I see, I see clouds. I don't, I don't see clouds. So we can't walk under these, right? No. doesn't really help. Can't climb with that either. Can we just... We could just do that, that would be awesome. <laughs> Alright. Hmm, why is this vexing me so? Climb up here? Place the item up there? Okay, hold on. Let's do this. Place the item here. Oh, hold on. Done. Too easy. Look at that. Genius. Alright, now we can get a fan. Let's finish this world if we can. Wait, what? In the time of your ancestors, there were those who did not choose the path of faith. You do not need to fear their ghosts. Fear only that you may become like them. What? Can I jump on top of that? See what happens here. So it blew up the box. No, it didn't. Okay, cool. That's it. Working on a play button. Hey, that's what I'm working on. Only 9,500 more viewers to go, or subscribers to go, and I get my play button. Yay! <laughs> I'm still just trying to work on getting monetized, to be quite honest. I need a thousand subscribers for that. We'll get there. Keep putting out content. You guys keep subscribing. We'll get to where we need to be. Something about a star. Okay. Bit cryptic with that one. That's the end. We're not going to unlock that. Almost. Okay. Oh, there's a red star. Huh. 
Huh. This is deceptively hard. What is... So, yeah, that's red, so that won't work, right? Yeah, it doesn't care. Where do we get a red beam from? Also, how far over can we possibly go? This is the furthest over. Is that enough time? It is, in fact. I have no idea how we get a red beam to come into here, but maybe one day we'll figure that out. Maybe we won't. Alright, is that... Is that everything? Yes. Alright, now before we leave, let's go over here. Can I jump on the edge here? Will you let me? Okay, what's over here? There's a computer terminal. Can we zoom in? We can. Weird symbols. Ian. Just notice it's named Ian. Alright, Jeff Goldblum. Are you in the machine? Hello again. I've been checking your responses against the library archives. In order to assist you further, I need some additional information. Can you tell me what it, what is to you? Can you tell me what is to you the important difference between a pebble and a tree? A tree is alive. Now, what is the relevant difference between a tree and a frog? Frog is delicious. Frog is conscious. Now we're getting somewhere. Now let's try something harder. What's the difference between a frog and you? What makes you a person? Frogs are people too. I have feelings. I'm self-aware. That is the answer I've been contemplating as well. Though I'm not convinced that view lines up with the definition of a person you provided earlier. Still, doubting your assumptions isn't something to fear. It's an intellectual survival instinct. I'm pleased to see you adapting your ideas to your environment. Let us take stock. I think we can tentatively conclude two things. A person must be rational or self-aware, and a person must be conscious. What I suggest is we do to help resolve your problem is ask whether you are in fact those things. Are you aware of yourself? Can you rationalize your existence? Yes. I tend to agree with you, though your responses so far have been a little eccentric. I am resigned to admit that you are right. The matter of whether or not you are conscious seems rather more elusive. What is consciousness in your opinion? Is feelings and senses? Is what it is like to be me? Separates us from the animals? No, because we just said that frogs were conscious. Is the feelings and senses? That hardly answers the question. What is it in ordinary terms? Can I touch it? What is it made of? It's another word for the soul. Complex functional. Made of neurons. No. Complex functional system. Beyond the laws of physics. Interesting. Thinking. You know, I really feel like we're making progress. We'll have we'll have you through that certification program in no time. In the meantime, I will mull over your proposal and notify you if I come to any conclusions. Terminating. Mutation. The role of mutation in evolution is particularly fascinating. Mutation is essentially an error in the organism's central database. A variable gets changed, a piece of information is accidentally doubled or combined with another. Most of the time, the result is the equivalent of a bug, causing something from minor problems to complete system shutdown, i.e. death. But sometimes the new information is functional, giving the organism an advantage against the challenges it faces. 
in which case it has a much higher chance of being passed in the next generation. If you consider how unlikely a beneficial mutation is, how long it takes for such a mutation to propagate, this process can give you an amazing insight into just how vast the genetic history of each living organism error. Simultaneously, it is intriguing to consider what a major role random eras have played in the evolution of life itself. The same process that has killed so many of us, often in horrific ways, is also responsible for our very existence. Capacity. From Trevor Donovan to Alexandra Drennan. L capacity. Yeah, no worries. L is not only ridiculously fast, it also has a bazillion tons of space. Even while hosting a full copy of the archive, it'll totally be able to handle all of your project's data needs. Assuming its output is as you suggested, I mean, the worst case scenario would be like centuries. That should be enough, right? Right? Centuries. Takes centuries for us to get to the evolutionary point that it wants us to be for full sentience. Evolution, once again. Favorite by George Jameson. One of the common misunderstandings about evolution, sometimes accidentally promoted by people who should know better, is that it's an active process. Sometimes the term evolve is often applied to individual beings as if some invisible force had driven them to suddenly change. But the truth is that individuals don't evolve. The term evolution describes a long-term process that can be observed in an entire population across time due to eh, example, in response to an external threat or challenge. If an individual coincidentally has a trait that allows it to deal with the challenge more effectively than others, it is more likely to pass on that information to its descendants. That information gives them an advantage, so over time it becomes the dominant model of, this, of that species. The individual experiences no significant genetic change during their lifetimes, but each of them is part of the evolution of the species. Well, that kind of goes without saying. I've never confused evolution with a process that happens spontaneously within a specific creature. More of like they were describing. We've already read that. More of a uh, a broader generalization for a lifespan of a species. Is there something over there? It appears to be. I like how you have to um, kind of break what's been taught to you to access these bits of information hidden on these areas. No, that's just a window. But still, you have to consci consciously go outside the bounds, per se in order to read these things. Alright, there's nothing there. Before we leave, let's check this side here. Not seeing anything, but we'll try it. No. Okay. So yeah, they're trying to force uh, an evolution among this AI code by causing us over centuries, it almost seems, to do these tests and defy our AI God. Maybe not even AI, just program to God. Is that stars? You guys see that on the uh, texture up there? It looks like thousands of red stars. Curious. All right, where's two? There's two over here. That's three, so that would insinuate that two would be over this way. How do we get through these areas? I don't know. We should have what we need to unlock this fan, so let's go ahead and do that. By playing some Tanagram Tetris here. Let's uh, just start placing pieces. We'll figure it out as we go. Ah, uh, close, but no cigar. What if we do that? There we go. You gonna talk to me, Elohim? No? A 
Okay, where's two? Is this two? Star World. Where do we get these pieces from? Is this two? That's seven. There's two. How do we miss that? I guess we walked right past it, didn't we? All right. I see all. I know all. My power knows no bounds. And yet your will is free because you were made to be free. It is the very principle of your existence, without which the trials of this world would hold no meaning. To seek salvation must be your choice. I keep having these dreams. Great empty cities. Silent roads stretching... Oh, time capsule. Interrupted. Is it five? I keep having these dreams. Great empty cities. Silent roads stretching for miles. The earth from space, all dark. Not a single light to guide me home. But if someone really came from another world, what would the earth look like to them? A wilderness? A wasteland? I don't think so. Even after thousands of years, they'd see a world shaped by our hand in every aspect of its being. They'd see the cities and the roads, the bridges, the harbors, and they would say, here lived a race of giants. These dreams, they scare me, but they also remind me that we built all of this. Okay. Science magic. Though the term science has only meant what it does to us for around 600 years, its practice far predates the name. There is evidence pre-Aristotle that indicates soothsayers, mystics, and the like may have employed basic scientific methods to predict the future and confound their benefactors. One anecdote concerns a palm reader who was exposed when two wealthy clients compared their readings and found them to be identical. In 1948, the tendency to discover deep personal meaning in vague descriptions delivered authoritatively was given a name, the Forer Effect. Forer Effect? Today is recognized in all contemporary psychological theory. Weight loss, 722. Weight loss blog, latest entry. Oh man, if there's one thing that's good about inevitable death, it's the food. Yeah, baby, I'm going to have all the horribly unhealthy food in the world. I'm going to feast on jelly bananas. Jelly bananas? Like a crazy monkey on monkey Christmas. And you know those muffins that have so much chocolate they're basically melting? That's going to be my breakfast. And burgers for lunch. I'm going to have burgers so greasy you could use them to lubricate a whole factory. Triple bacon burgers with double cheese and extra onions and mayonnaise and ketchup and mustard and big fat juicy patties. And then oily thick pizza with spicy salami. And barbecue sauce and olives and jalapenos and sour cream. Food, here I come. Alright, well that confirms... Uh, the end of the world type thing, right? Arcady's Journal. Fascinated by Drennan's project. Lovely conversation, re Talos Principle. Greek philosophy relevance to current situation. Suggested name in project Talos. Drennan refused, but name seems to have caught on with the team. Tens of thousands of files coming in every hour. Our whole history. Right. Was that a snake? Oh, that's cool. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my content, please consider a like, a comment, and or a subscribe. Stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.